It's entirely possible that I live in a bubble wherein I'm constantly bombarded with comments and videos on the topic because I'm fascinated by the topic of lipoproteins causing heart disease and have done a lot of research on it. However, I often feel I have to speak up when I see videos like this. After David Feldman and Dr. Budoff proved that LDL does not cause cardiovascular disease, do you think mainstream cardiology will finally give up on the lipid heart hypothesis? Well, maybe when they all die. <laughs> Old concepts die hard. You know, old concepts tend to have a lifespan of the people that hold them. It may sound like I'm joking, but I'm actually serious. I think a lot of people are not going to give up on the lipid heart hypothesis in their lifetime. That's Dr. Brewer reading a comment discussing a series of studies that have been performed on lean mass hyperresponders, which is a subset of people that once they consume a low carbohydrate diet, they experience high, low density lipoprotein levels. Those are the uh, particles that carry our cholesterol and triglyceride molecules across our body. As well as they have low triglycerides, those are fat molecules. And these people also experience elevated high density lipoproteins, which are particles that also carry cholesterol molecules, but are typically involved in returning the cholesterol molecules to the liver instead of away from the liver, like the low density lipoproteins. Okay, so this elevated LDL, HDL, and low triglycerides in normal weight individuals has been deemed the lean mass hyperresponder. And we can even see that evidenced here in one of the analyses on the phenomenon. And here is some of the data across several studies. We're looking at the overall LDL change on a lower carbohydrate diet. Admittedly, technically the limit of these studies is to be under 130 grams of carbohydrates per day, which in the past has always garnered me some low carb community commentary that that isn't low carbohydrate enough, and the studies are pointless. Yet, oddly enough, now that critique has evaporated from the commenters. Always odd how that happens, a, a mystery worthy of Nancy Drew. Anyway, the researchers clearly show that a lower carbohydrate diet leads to substantial increases in LDL. That's the low density lipoproteins on the vertical axis, but only in people that are low BMI, thereby classically normal weight, shown on the horizontal axis. Now, the way it's been previously understood is that LDL is an independent risk factor for heart disease. So you can imagine that if LDL rises by 40, 50, or even more, that is a worry. However, this is where many people on the internet are taking this data, along with another study that will be finishing up its data analysis soon. We'll call this study the LMHR Prospective Study, and absolutely going buck wild on the established idea that LDL and the protein associated to it, ApoB, is causative for heart disease. As you saw in the clip, some people, and they're not alone, are under the impression that the data from these two or three studies will invalidate the entire LDL heart disease model. At no fault of the researchers, I think some people are grossly misunderstanding what these studies really show. Some are letting their bias and general lack of knowledge about the literature drive this narrative that LDL, ApoB, heart disease model is now dead. And I do think that some health influencers are not contextualizing these results sufficiently. And in some of the worst cases, not at all. So what does this all mean? First off, the lipid heart hypothesis, which the LDL ApoB heart disease model is involved, has a tremendous amount of data backing it. As proof, I'm going to have these studies showing the link between ApoB, LDL, and heart disease move across the screen for the rest of the video as a demonstration of exactly how overwhelming the evidence really is. This evidence does not mean that there still can't be exceptions to the rule, which is exactly where the studies like the LMHR studies can play a critical role to show the exceptions, a subgroup of people who may be immune to the general rule of ApoB containing particles being causative to heart disease. However, for that to occur, 
but we need bulletproof evidence, which none of the studies up to this point provide. For example, the meta-analysis that I showed earlier indicates the effect a lower carbohydrate diet has on LDL levels in leaner individuals, but it does not speak to the risk that those individuals face from that elevated LDL. Or often, I get lambasted with the age-old argument of all studies in LDL or ApoB are associative, so basically junk science. And yet now, the one study looking at the actual heart disease risk in lean mass hyperresponders is associative. And yet, just like the Nancy Drew joke that I threw in earlier, those criticisms have conveniently vanished. The hypocrisy is palpable. Finally, if you are a person who believes that LDL or ApoB is not a risk factor for heart disease and you follow a health influencer that discusses this stuff, ask yourself, why haven't they covered any of the studies on screen? With all this data, you would think in an impartial, truth-seeking person, they would at least open a few of these and explain the data they're in. And yet, there's an outsized, sometimes exclusive focus on the minority disagreeing data. So I think a responsible, science-minded, truth-seeking person would take all this data inside all these studies and acknowledge that it exists, along with the hard work of hundreds of researchers, and then take the new data, like that of future lean mass hyperresponder studies or data from other studies, and if warranted, integrate it into a new working model instead of myopically concentrating on the select few and ignoring the gigantic mountain behind us. Oh, and a few quick facts. There are over 100 scientists in just the studies shown, many more in the field. There are over 1 million people studied here. And there are over 30 studies shown on screen, including 100 plus within these analyses. I'm not saying there isn't room for new information. Of course there is. But I am saying, do you really want to tell all these people that they're corrupt or idiots in their field, criticisms that I see all too often, without even bothering to open their work? Or can we pay them a bit of respect and assume that they know at least a little bit more than we do and acknowledge that we could learn from their work? We'll see what the future holds. Remember, integrate, don't ignore. Thank you.